Hello YouTubers and welcome to my April update for the Des Moines Valley Railroad. Uh, this month pretty much has been a maintenance update. Been working on getting the freight cars with uh, all the same couplers, with uh, most of the same weight, and uh, with the same wheel sets. I uh, went through the first pass and uh, put all new uh, metal wheel sets. The uh, Intermountain wheel sets are my favorite, the 33 inch and the 36 inch, depending on the, the car. And uh, so we went through and did all those uh, over a little bit of a period of time. And then after that, went through and changed all the couplers to KD number 158s, the scale coupler. The cars have been a lot more reliable in coupling, uncoupling, and uh, just with the, the same coupler style. Uh, also went through just recently and uh, updated the weight in all the, the cars to between three and a half and four and a half ounces depending on the car size and that's really been a big help in uh, getting the cars to uh, run more reliably reliably not have uh, the jiggling that would happen and, and uh, derailments things like that so it's been really a good update to do those those three maintenance items that I'd recommend anybody to, uh, to go and do that to their railroads too, to their freight car freight fleets. Uh, this month I was, thought I'd do another operation uh, segment. We did uh, car cards and weight bills last month. Uh, the other uh, piece of paperwork that we like to use on the railroad is uh, the track warrant system. Uh, this is a system whereby the dispatcher and the train crews can communicate and uh, give an authority over uh, different stretches of track. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of go through the form with you and uh, show you what, how we uh, do it here on the railroad. Okay, so when a crew is ready to depart a particular station, they will radio the dispatcher and request a warrant. The dispatcher will reply, uh, are you ready to copy the warrant? To which hopefully the crew will have a copy of this pad along with the dispatcher and they will copy it in sync together. Dispatcher will basically uh, verbalize over the radio the track warrant in this particular case. This will be track warrant number one. The date can be a fictional date or a present date, however you want to put the date. I will put a fictional one in, June 15, 1996. The layout operates in the 90s, so we'll just pick one out in there. Uh, two, the I use the engine number, so 4315 we'll say in this case. I also designate whether west or east, since it's going from Ottumwa to Des Moines, that would be westbound at Ottumwa, which I have a three-letter designation OTM for that. If I had a previous track warrant, that would be checkbox one. It should be a track warrant number, whatever the previous one that affected this train would be void. This would supersede that. What we will do, though, is checkbox two. The crew wants to... Uh, has a delivery at Pella that they want to spend some time in, so they will proceed from Ot Otumwa, OTM, to Pella. Then they don't have anything else to go, any further to go, otherwise the dispatcher could grant their permission from there on. Uh, this isn't a work train, they're not really doing a lot of work, they're going to be working within Pella yard limits, so those don't have to get filled out. Uh, there is no time involved here as far as uh, the warrant being in effect at a certain particular time. I don't run a flat, fast clock right now. Uh, the authority expires. There's again, there's not really a time going there. Um, you also can have this warrant in effect until after the arrival of a certain train at a certain station. You can do a bunch of different things in here. We will check box number nine though, because we are going to clear the main track at the last name point, which is Pella. Uh, a couple other things in here. Uh, speed restrictions if you want to create some some different interesting things you can do that with this warrant basically then the dispatcher will read this off and we'll say uh, warrant number one dated June 15th 1996 to the 4315 West at Atumwa checkbox 2 proceed from Atumwa to Pella checkbox 9 clear main track at last name point at that point the Conductor or engineer, if we have a single crew, will uh, reply back with the same verbiage as, as the dispatcher did. As soon as he finishes with the checkbox 9 at last name point, he will, uh, the dispatcher will okay that he heard it back correctly. He will give a time, say okay at 1.30 p.m. Dispatcher's initials. 
and then uh, the conductor will also give his initials. As soon as they get to that point at the end where they've cleared out, cleared out the main line, they will, uh, the conductor or engineer will report to the dispatcher that they are clear, track warrant. Now one is they're clear of that and then the dispatcher will tell them that, okay, it's clear at 2.56 p.m. by the conductor. Here's a little refresher sheet that I put together on track warrants too. Kind of makes it easier to understand. Uh, kind of what I had run down earlier is that the uh, valid track warrant is issued to its crew and okay before the train may occupy any portion of the main track. Uh, track warrants are addressed to a single train. The trains verified by the road name and number of the lead engine. The, uh, when the train conductor is ready, the dispatcher will dictate the track warrant. Each warrant is given a warrant number. As the warrant is dictated, both the train crew and dispatcher will mark the check boxes, select it, and copy down the information specified. Once the dispatcher is finished dictating the warrant, the train's conductor will read it back. This step lets the dispatcher ensure what he believes is dictated is actually what is copied to the conductor. The written record avoids confusion. Then at the end, once the conductor has read back the warrant to the dispatcher's satisfaction, the dispatcher will make it okay. At the current time, the conductor then repeats back that the warrant was okay and when, followed by the conductor's initials. And once the train's completed the movement, specified the warrant, and is off the main track or within yard limits, that warrant can be voided or made clear. So this is warrant can be made clear using the checkbox one on the succeeding warrant. So anyway, this is kind of a, a better way, I guess, of describing it. I kind of went through off of memory on the previous, but this, uh, I do have a, a form that talks about all the different parts and what they mean and things like that. And it also does add to excitement of the railroad. Um, on the back here, I've got uh, the uh, abbreviations to all the different towns that are on my layout and even some that aren't. Uh, sometimes I will have a warrant that will go to a location that is off layout as well. So it kind of adds interest and excitement to make the railroad seem bigger than it is. Well, anyway guys, that's kind of the basics of track warrant control. It uh, can be a fun little uh, operational kind of add interest to the railroad. Just kind of fun when you've got several people, makes the railroad seem bigger and uh, just gives it a little more of a, a formalized operation. Again, it, it can, you can take it or, or leave it. It's just another tool that we have in our little model railroad toolbox. So that's about all I have for now. Hope you guys have a great month and uh, thanks for watching.